All right, welcome to this first overview of uh, the new algorithm version that I uh, published yesterday. So uh, this is like a program I, uh, I, I wrote myself or created myself uh, entirely in Touch Designer. So this is running completely in Touch Designer. Uh, all the stuff is based on, uh, you know, all the, all the operators inside of Touch Designer. And um, yeah, so this is like a, an alpha, alpha version. I just want to give an overview of what this can do and, and how this sort of works. And yeah, as this is an alpha version, of course, there's a lot of bugs. And um, I mean, it's running pretty well on my PC, but I think there's a lot of room for improvement. And um, yeah, so let's just dive into it, right? So first off, I just want to go over the, the interface, which, you know, I, I, I previously had like uh, made a video on, on an old, older version of this that I did for my bachelor. And uh, this is sort of like a new, completely new version. And um, so the interface is also completely different. And it's also just focused on like one screen now. So <clears throat> about the interface, it's basically sort of going from left to right. So uh, we, we have like a header and a footer sort of thing. That's, that's really straightforward. We have a, an input section here. So we could input a, a file that we can select here or we can just uh, go ahead and, and play this. And uh, we can also use device in, which uh, makes, you know, much more sense for like live performances, I, I guess. And uh, you can like select the device here and everything. So. Yeah, and then you have uh, a clock up here. So that like, like uh, you have two options here as well. So we'll just run an internal clock that you can manually uh, like adjust uh, to the song or the, you know, whatever is being played. And the other option is to, um, to use Ableton uh, and to sync it to Ableton. As you can see, like it should actually be playing here. There's a lot of bugs with the TD Ableton, unfortunately. So I hope they're they're gonna be fixed. That's not really on my part, but uh, still the zinking is sort of working. And um, yeah, there's also some other Ableton stuff uh, I'll explain later. And then we have the output here. We can uh, output uh, to the projector. I'm not gonna show that now, but if you wanna output to your second monitor or you know a projector, then you can do that here. Um, I'm not entirely happy about this because I originally used another window comp and that didn't like work smoothly. So now it's sort of a hacky way around this. So I'm still looking for a better way to do this. Here you can like select the resolution and uh, a fit, but that's not really uh, that important right now. So as you can see, as it's 4K now, it's like uh, going down a lot with the resolution, so you might not want to do that. And you might also want to reset this now. And fuck, did I break it? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, right, so the second thing is uh, adjustment. So you just have some, some basic stuff. So uh, you can adjust your output. And then you can also send this to uh, Spout. You can like turn this to send and then uh, just uh, type in algorithm Spout should be I think I'm going to write that in a description and uh, you can also send this to NDI to just pick that up uh, on some, some, for example, Resolume or something. And um, yeah, then you have the, the selection here of like uh, visuals to use. So um, how this works is that you basically put all the visuals in here uh, at the beginning. So it sort of like loads them all. And I'm going to show you that now. So. I can just like clear this and um, yeah, it's a little, little arrow of my OBS so now you can see I've got this list of uh, pre-made talks files and I can just drag any of these so I'm just gonna use um, some like simple noise because that's got a lot of parameters uh, or like I can I can just use um, several ones so I'm just gonna take like these four and I can just drag them and put them in here and now you can see it loads them in and creates uh, some, yeah, some, some thumbnails, some thumbnails here. <laughs> All right. So don't worry about the black screen. All right. So it automatically loads them in here into like the two slots and uh, up updates the, uh, the parameters here. So in the middle here, we always have our parameters that are based on the custom parameters of your talks. And uh, yeah, so I can like change some stuff here and um, you can automatically see the output here. 
So I can now, like I have uh, my four visuals in here, I can now just also take this one, just drag it onto here and it automatically updates. So that's the way you sort of, uh, the workflow is sort of, you know, you have one visual in here, you, you do your thing with the visual. And then uh, you have another visual here and then you can just like fade from one to the other or also uh, uh, like manually. Or you can also like comp, comp them, so composite them in, in, in a different, and uh, an interesting way here. So you can just use different composites. Um, but yeah, the workflow is sort of, you, you go from one to the other. So you go over there and then you can just drag in a different one here and then uh, click that again and go over to the first one again. And then, you know, again, drag one in here and go back to that. So you can, you know, sort of, you have like a VJ set or DJ set as you're playing um to then you can just uh work work this way um sometimes there's a problem with like a little lag uh, so you can turn on off these viewers also by right clicking on here so you you don't see these and you can um, select how long you want the transitions to be by changing this here all right so you have to like select the one uh, you want to change the parameters off here and then you, you have all these parameters with presets. So I'm going to delete these presets. So you can already see they, they're like jumping between two different presets here. And I can just go ahead and delete these. So now I have the option to change all of these parameters. It's actually, let's change it. I also have some um, post effects on right now. So now I can just change these. Um, I'm not entirely happy with how this is working because it's a bit laggy. But um, and so far, you can only use like uh, floats and poles as um, custom parameters. But uh, yeah, you can like have some fun with this. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, the main like, yeah, let's also we can like, I don't know, create a, a preset here and then change all this stuff and then create another preset. And then we can like jump between these presets. Okay, that wasn't a really good example. Okay, let's update this preset and now we can like switch between these and uh, we can have up to 12 for now okay so um what you know the main thing about the algorithm or my main main idea was to make audio reactive visuals so um we have this uh, section over here that's called modifiers and with the modifiers, uh, we have a lot of different ways to like modify our visuals. So you can see all these M's, which uh, stands for manual. And um, for e everywhere where there's like, you can see this black thing with an M inside, you can use a modifier on that. So we have like this list here, for example, beat detection, which I'm kind of proud of. <laughs> so it looks pretty nice. So we let's just play this song. And you can see uh, we have some some options here to like um, filter out the kick, the, the snare, and uh, the hat. So I've done some threshold, uh, which you can see changes here, like also like the uh, frequency and some some pre -game. Um So let's say I want to use the hat on the period, so I can just drag that on here, and now you can see this instantly uh, reacts to the hat, and I can like change. I have some some knobs here to change the way in, in which the, they are like reacting. So I can also like use the kick on the exponent now, for example. It's like a bit too much room, but then, yeah. And I can also smooth the output. So yeah, you can basically drag in a visual with all your custom parameters and then use uh, all of these channels here uh, and just um, change that. So we can also, we also have a rhythm, which is uh, based <coughs> on the uh, clock up here. Right now it's actually quite perfectly synced. You can sync that by pressing that button. So now you can see the one is perfectly on the one of the song. And then we can use these uh,
We also have the same thing with Ableton. So I have Ableton connected. You can see that the screen here. And, then... and uh, if I go to Ableton now, and it's gonna turn black here. Like I'm gonna play like a MIDI file in Ableton. So um, <clears throat> I got my, uh, my track here, free MIDI track. And on there I got like this, um, it's not really gonna fit to the, to the song now. God, I hate this black screen stuff. <laughs> Never mind. Um, so we have like every note individually here, or we have the sum. So we can also use that coming in from, from Ableton. So we can like clear that, um, hide this. If we had like another one, we could like add a device there and then it should technically automatically work for your um, other div uh, like MIDI track. And we also have stems, but I'm just gonna sort of ignore that for now. I'm not really happy with what this is. What, what this is basically for if you have like a, a song and you have like, uh, I don't know, 10 stems. Um, so 10, 10 tracks of a song you can in the future, uh, like use every stem here individually. Technically, if you click on here, you should be able to listen to that. Of course, it doesn't really work right now. Never mind. I should, I'm just going to sort of ignore the stems for now, but that's sort of an idea for the future. And under uh, miscellaneous, we have like um, two channels or like four channels here in total. Um, just a constant just going up so you can just, uh, you know, animate it like this or just a noise. So you can you can animate, uh, for example, the animation speed based on, on just some noise here. You can you have the usual noise stuff here. You can also make this loop or not loop, uh, reset it, and you know, some basic stuff. Um, there's gonna be more channels here in the future as well. And for the MIDI, by the way, uh, I also wanted to add a leap, leap motion. I sort of did, but it, it also doesn't work that well yet. So <clears throat> that's for the future. But yeah, these modifiers are sort of the heart of, of algorithm, I would say. And I'm gonna add more stuff to this. And I also have the idea of making this um, talk spaced as well. So you can like add and remove um, uh, like these these parts, these modifiers, sort of widgets in a way. All right, so let's look at the, the last thing here, which is uh, post effects. Uh, it's really straightforward. It's quite similar to uh, Resolume, I would say. So we can like turn on a, um, a post effects. So let's just turn on mirror, for example, or let's turn on, um, let's just fade to a different thing here. And um, let's change the hue. So we can just change the hue here. And for example, now we can look at how to use like a constant. So we can put that on the hue. And now like the hue changes. We can go down to speed. And now, uh, or like really fast. And now, yeah, we're using that. And um, we could also like use the kick to like turn the color on and off. And um, yeah, there, there's some, some pre-made uh, post effects here. I'm gonna make more of these as well. For example, you have like masks where you can just use a, an image here or like different uh, pre-made shapes, change the scale, I don't know. And uh, some rasterizing or uh, displacing. Ah, that's tra transforming, displacing. You know, and uh, again, uh, we can make the amount, for example, based on the Let's pause this. All right, so um, <clears throat> yeah, you have some blurring trends. And by the way, you can also like, if you click on an, like an arrow here, so let's say I have like a mask and uh, a rasterize. So I can either like use the rasterize before the mask and then the mask is being put over that or the rasterize after that and that takes the mask, in, mask into account. So you, you can like sort of um, <coughs> order like, yeah, order your sort, your uh, po post effects and make them audio reactive and all that stuff. So I also wanted to add like presets here in the future probably. But yeah, I mean, that's sort of it. So. Uh, 
there's a, as I said, there's a lot of ideas I have um, to to just uh, to to work on this and to make this better and um, to add more more options, especially more um, like you know making like having the option to include all custom parameters, not just you know floats and pulls, and um, <clears throat> also adding a lot more modifiers, a lot more post effects, and to just to make this whole thing run more smoothly because right now it's very demanding i would say and that's also like a lot of that is based um on the fact that i'm using the widgets i know a lot of you are gonna or some of you are gonna like scream what so why are you using widgets uh they're so like um demanding or like you know taking away a lot of processing power and i know they are but i still really love working with them i also like they're gonna be come better i think uh, like at least that's what the derivative team says so right now they're not very like um, efficient, but I hope they will be in the future. And, you know, I sort of come from a design and UI UX background and I just want to have my stuff look pretty. So yeah, widgets are a very easy way to, to do that. And um, yeah, I'm quite happy with the way this looks and technically also the way it works. But there's, you know, just always room for improvement. Um, right, so I think that's that's basically it. Um, you can you can download this from my Patreon. Um, Patreon. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, as I said, this is like an alpha version. And if you want to collaborate with me, if you want to work with me on this, if you have ideas, just reach out to me. And um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so if you, I'm I'm also gonna like. Uh, publish this at some point like you know make make it public so everybody can like uh, access it not just my patrons um but that's going to be like i don't know end of this year later this year i'm not sure but yeah thanks so much for watching and thanks for everybody like sort of supporting me on the way of building this it's it's been super fun even though there's been a lot of like uh, swearing <laughs> on the way and uh getting like completely uh i don't know desperate but uh, it works and I'm quite happy with it and yeah so I'll see you on the next video and yeah bye bye